Sudanshu Sadia's Mulch is a complication. This IFS officer spy espionage story starts off on an assumption that the viewer is stupid. Artistic license is one thing, but once you admit to the fact that different genres of cinema have different grammars of their own, one will begin to understand that espionage films, spy thrillers, whodunits must have a linear logic to place crime, criminal, victim in specific places. I remember having watched a ghost movie in Tamil by a promising filmmaker. My uh, photographer, Dattu, had a minuscule role in the movie where the, it's, the premise is ridiculous because the ghost over there avenges the victim on the ground that she was defied a lift, a chance to get into the lift and what are the consequences of that? There are. So these kind of flimsy excuses that become the premise of a story in an espionage story is likely to fall like a pack of cards and that's exactly the major crisis with Lurch. Sudanshu's story deals with a young IFS officer, Suhana, played by Jahanvi. We'll talk about Jahanvi a little later. Suhana herself is a Nepo kid. I'm only talking about the story. Uh, her father is a great diplomat. So when she comes to a very high position as number two with the British consulate in Britain, Everybody attributes it to her father's role and uh, you understand later that it may not be so, but I'm, I'm spilling the beans, I won't. She immediately finds disfavor and non-acceptance from colleagues including Jacob Tamang played by Mian Chang and Sunil Kuti played by Roshan Matthew. So, she also has a driver who's more a stalker in Salim Sai, played by Rajesh Talam, whom she calls Salim Uncle. He seems to know the family even before she landed here. But it's inexplicable to all that uh, a young girl is made to head such a prestigious position. But lo and behold, in, even before you could say, Jahannavi Kapoor Suhana, she jumps into bed with a stranger chef called Nakul, played by Gulshan Devaya. And from there begins her challenges as an officer. She now becomes a captive victim to blackmail. She's got to sell national secrets. How she saves the country, what she does. Does she come clean? Does it affect her reputation, her father's reputation? What happens? Who is the final culprit? Interestingly, the political angle to the story is that the Pakistan Prime Minister comes to India and uh, there's an attempt made on the Pakistan Prime Minister and a coup d'etat happens in uh, Pakistan. It's an unsuccessful coup. And finally, what happens is not what happens. The performances from everyone is not worth mentioning. While great actors like Adil Hussain, Rajesh Talani are all reduced to props, Jahan, she just can't sum up or bring that that's required. You know, there is, I see a thread in the way I web you films. And I always keep looking at an alternative actor who could have salvaged the film. I would have loved to see Tapsi Pannu do this kind of a film. Because the emotive portion that you're supposed to bring in of tension, of guilt, of fear, 
none of them register on on Jahanavi and Jahanavi's costumes and IFS officer, they're ridiculous. I think we need to do some more homework, but even when we're making mainstream films. I know Jahanavi's made some very interesting choices in her cinema. She started, of course, with a very typical tested dharkan, but afterwards her Mr. and Mrs. Mahi, her Millie, her Babal, her Gunjat, uh, uh, Saxena, were all, of course, out of the box. Uh, Choices. Does she make an impress in this outing? I am afraid no, she does not. I think there is reason to suspect, just like how Sahana is chosen on grounds of apparent nepotism, something like that seems to creep in in the real, real life too. Would a different actor? have walked through a role of this kind, would it have been offered to another actor if she was not Jahanavi? It's a moot question in our context of our cinema. But that's not the question. Because if Jahanavi had got that role and had done well, like Karina would do any film that she had on her own on her own steam, that's not happening with Jahanavi. Uh, so one is tempted to look for causes other than cinematic. Gulshan Devaya carries the film through as the villain. You really want daggers in, and that's and he does it very subtly. It's not the Prem Chopra of the 70s and the 80s or the Ranjits. It's very cool. It's an amazing role. And I think he's the one actor who really adds credibility to the entire Ulaj film. Otherwise, Ulaj or Athi Uljawa film. Thank you, Dadu. Thank you, Abhinav. I'm not saying much on this film because not much in the requires to be said, except that it's a disappointing movie. It's really nice, uh, you know, that you have access to the kind of areas from where you're shooting this film. You could have tightened up the script. You could have given a more authentic, you could have authenticized uh, the protagonist victim sleeping with the chef at the drop of a hat. You could have probably ensured that there was some circumstance, they, they spiked her drink, anything as simple as that. But the filmmaker thinks the audience has left their brains behind and that you would have to do if you want to see something nice in this world. On that note, on that note sign off with this review. See you a while later. Bye-bye. Acknowledgements again to Abhinav and Dutt.